Yeah, because you're doing, when you practice meditation, you're doing something that is radically different from the way you normally are. How often do you sit still and not move at all and be totally silent for 30 minutes? Most, this is an important thing to understand. This is really an interesting thing to consider for yourself, right? I think I'm fairly safe in saying, there's 8 billion people on the planet, right? I'm fairly safe in saying that somewhere between 95 and 99 percent of them have never sat still for 30 minutes and will never sit still for 30 minutes in their entire life. Because the way that, uh, the, and, and part of the reason that that's the case is because the mindset that the majority, majority of human beings are in, that doesn't make any sense. Why would I do that? Right? That's wasting time. Everybody knows that you should be active, you should stay at it, you know, you should keep developing yourself, you should keep improving, you should have a good, strong work, work ethic. So sitting still and, and, gaze, and navel gazing is, is, you know, that's for people that, that are lost, lost, you know, they don't understand. They're probably being manipulated by a cult leader and they don't know it. That's how unusual it is for people to come into contact with the teaching that allows people to wake up and discover who they really are and start to go sane and start to become healthy and start to have an experience of well-being. You know, and that's one of the reasons that I, I focus on this business of the purpose of all of this is to recognize the truth and the truth that I'm speaking of is the truth of who you actually are, what you actually are. And the reason that's so significant and I think one of the, you know, one of the reasons that I can say this with some authority is because I'm a psychologist and I have practiced working with people for 40 years. So I've seen it all, you know, especially working in the prison system. That's why I mentioned the prison system. I've seen it all. I've seen all forms of mental illness. I've seen all forms of addiction. I've seen all forms of dysfunction in relationships. And so I can say with authority that the, the, the root cause of all of it, the root cause of all of it is that people are trying to function and live a successful life and experience well-being as this limited, confused, distorted version of what they really are. That's the source of the whole thing. If you ask yourself, if you ask yourself, right now, if I say to you, think of a problem you have, right? Think of a problem you have. Just do that. You know, that can't be hard, right? Because <laughs> one of the things that, uh, that is the hallmark of being a person and a personality is that you have problems, right? <laughs> so if you think of a problem that you have, and then I say to you, without even knowing what your problem is, right, that the source of that problem goes back to the idea that you have of yourself as a person. If you take that idea that you have of yourself of, as a person out of the picture, can you still have that problem? It doesn't, doesn't even matter what the problem is, right? It's a dramatic and radical shift in your experience to wake up and realize that you're not who you think you are. It's a dramatic and radical shift in your experience of yourself, your past, your future, your life, your relationships, to discover that you're not this cluster of psychological and emotional uh, issues, that that's not what you are. And when that becomes evident and when you get freed up from that, the things that were occurring to you that caused you stress and suffering and dysfunction just clear up in the process of life itself because they were all a function of who you were being that's all it was they were all a function of who you were being you know I was thinking about um, one of the people that comes here I won't say who they are but this person is consistently expressing problems consistently talking about the difficulties they're dealing with ever since I've met this person. Every time we speak, what comes out of this person's mouth is the current problems, right? 
And a lot of the times those problems are the reasons why this person isn't here, right? <laughs> and the reality of it is they don't, rec they have not yet recognized that, yeah, is, is, is it the case that life presents challenges? Of course it does, right? But how that occurs to you and how you relate to that does not have to be stressed out and suffering and upset, right? Doesn't have to be the case, right? When things happen in your life, they present you with situations that need responses, right? This is the difference between a problem and a situation, right? When things happen in your life, they present you with challenges which are situations that require responses, yes? That's all that can happen. That's all that can possibly happen, right? Now, whether that situation that requires a response is something that you have to be upset about and stressed out about is a function of who you're being. Otherwise, whatever happens, you relate to it, you respond to it, that's life. Because obviously one of the misconceptions that human beings have when you're operating as a personality is your expectations are, are ridiculous. They're ridiculous. Because whatever happens in anybody's life, right, this person that I mentioned, whatever happens in this person's life that keeps occurring to this person as stressful and difficult and hard and burdensome, you know, and pressure and all that, it's happening because of the person's experience of it from, them, from the idea that it shouldn't be happening like that. Do you understand? And it takes a person with a personality to, to conclude things should be different than the way they are. Awareness doesn't, isn't like that, right? When you're practicing meditation, part of the practice is to allow what's happening to happen. In other words, the simple definition of mindfulness-based meditation is to uh, pay attention in a particular way. What's that particular way? Without judging and evaluating, right? And if you're not judging and evaluating, it means that you're allowing everything to be the way it is, right? You're not judging it. You're not evaluating it, right? And so that's actually that way because the technique for meditation is trying to move you toward being like you are. It's trying to move you toward being like awareness is. Because awareness doesn't judge and evaluate. Awareness just is. And if you could wean yourself off of, right, identifying with the thought patterns, identifying with the emotional reactions, if you could wean yourself off of that gradually and start to reorganize yourself as awareness itself, right, then one of the things that becomes crystal clear is that life is the way life is. Which means people get sick, people die, accidents happen, life's unpredictable, right? That's the way life is, right? And so there's no expectation that it should be any different. So when those things happen, it's like, okay, that's happening. And then you respond to it. You act in whatever way is appropriate to act when that things happen, when those things happen. If you look at the difference between that and the way the things go on in your life as a person and how they occur to you, how they appear to you, how you feel about them, how much stress is involved with them, right? How much pressure is involved with them, how, how difficult it is for you, how you're struggling with the whole thing, how much conflict is involved. Can you see that's all the person? That's all the person. Rather than the very simple way of being, which is the way awareness is, is that awareness is aware naturally, effortlessly aware all the time that things are the way they are. This is how simple it gets. Awareness is aware effortlessly all the time that things are the way they are. And, and part of the way things are is that they're always changing, right? They're unpredictable, right? And there are certain factors that are built into the situation of living a human life, right? Which is unpredictability, accidents, death, sickness, loss, right? But awareness is not expecting life to be different than the way life is. It's like, okay, that's it, that's, you know, that's it. So when something happens, it's not a surprise. It's not upsetting. It's like, okay, that's what's going on. And even if you practice mindfulness, right, 
When you're practicing mindfulness, I've heard several of you report this. When you're practicing mindfulness, just the fact that you're more aware, you start to get, you start to catch on to this, right? That things happen, and when they happen, it's already happened, right? What's required is that you respond, you take some responsive action to it to deal with it, right? But it's not built into what's going on that you have to get crazy and upset. It's not built into it. You're just adding that, right? One of the people that comes to this class on a regular basis, and she, for some reason, she must be an old soul, right? She must have had many lifetimes because for some reason she caught onto this right away. And she started telling me many times after class, you know, this is changing and that's changing and this is changing. And she came to me the other day and she said she had a car accident, right? And she said the accident happened and, you know, once it happened, the car was wrecked, you know. And she just got that, okay, the car is wrecked, what do I got to do? And she just dealt with it and did what she had to do, right? For a lot of people, for most people, that would have been a big deal. Right? That would have been a big deal. They would have been all upset, you know, oh, my car. So that's the possibility. That's what, aware, that's what the practice of meditation can be the beginning of. But only if you understand that unless you learn what this practice was about in the beginning when it came into inception, it was part of a way of waking up. It was part of a way of... Uh, realizing your true nature. That's, that was the purpose of meditation in, in the beginning. And in, in the mindfulness movement that exists now, it was watered down to be stress reduction, right? Because the other thing would just be too much for people. But, you know, you, you, if you start to communicate to the masses that they're not who they think they are, they'll uh, figure a way to get you locked up. <laughs> It, that, that's what happens to people that, that have come, go too far with those kinds of statements, right? I mean, Jesus Christ pretty much was coming out and saying that pretty, pretty blatantly, right? And look how that turned out, right? Anybody that steps too far out of the groove, right? It's too far out of their lane, right? The, the, uh, the, the, the general population will figure out a way to take them down because they're threatening the existing status quo. You know, you take Martin Luther King, right? Assassination, right? You take the, the uh, who is the, the, uh, the leader in South Africa? Mandela. Mandela, right? Put him in jail. Yeah, they put him in jail for the better part of his life, right? So that's something that's very important for you to understand, that the, when, if, if you understand the value here and you understand the possibility here and you invest yourself in this because what else would you do if you see what this is, right? Because it's offering you the possibility of actually being happy and free and relaxed and at ease in your life, right? Uh, but if you take that trip and you do what it takes to wake up and, and be who you are, uh, you have to be responsible for the fact that in the world we live in, you're going to be a threat. If you walk around expressing that, especially if you make the mistake of wanting to save other people, right? That's a big mistake. You know, this is, other people don't want to be saved. You know, this is the kind of thing that people have to come to it on their own. You can't go out and, uh, you know, preach about this stuff to people. If you do, you'll find out why. You'll find out why. Because the way the, see, the psychology of the personality is such that if you try and tell a person, I'm telling you this for your own good, right? This could make a big difference in your life. This could change everything for you, right? The only way that personality is going to hear it is you're making them wrong. You're telling them, you're, what that's going to be heard as is you're telling me I'm not okay. You're telling me I'm wrong, right? You're telling me that, I, that you're better than me. That's the way it gets heard. And then the person is just going to react to that. Because the reality of this, the reality of this, this process of waking up is that until somebody's ready, they, they won't do it. Until they're ready, they won't do it. And that's the purpose of suffering. You know, it's like one of my teachers said, that God set this game up so that suffering becomes what has people want to wake up. 
to discover is this suffering inevitable? Is that all there is, right? And if somebody gets to the point where they're fed up, where they've had enough, right? And they see who you are being different or being happy or functioning, they'll ask you about it. And that's the way that you pass on the good news, you know? You become the confirmation of the truth. You become the expression of the possibility. And by being the expression of the possibility, people will be interested in what you're doing. You know, how did you get like that? You know, what's, what's going on? Still say you believe. Not necessarily. Not necessarily. That, it depends on the person. But you have to be responsive to wherever the person is. That's why, you know, when, when you're teaching these things, it's a, it's a big challenge because everybody's in a different place about it. You know, some people are never heard of it before, other people are further along with it and they've heard about it and they understand it and so forth. So um, you've got to try and respond to where, where each person is. And when you're dealing with a group of people, you have to try and say things that will be useful to everybody so that it's not too specific and not too, you know, not too complicated. But the bottom line isn't complicated, really. The bottom line isn't complicated. It's, it's, a, it's a very simple reality and the, and the bottom line is that uh, human beings, when you're born and you come into this world, part of the process of coming into this world that we live in, in time and space, is you have to learn to be part of the tribe. You have to learn that you're a body, you have to learn that you have a name and a personality. It's, that's an inevitable thing. There's nothing wrong with it. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just the, the problem is that's not the end of the evolution. That's not the end of the process. And that's where humanity is stuck. Humanity doesn't understand that there's another level, there's another part of this process, and that's to wake up to what you really are so that the person that you learn to be can be healthy and functional instead of crazy. Because if you don't know yourself as anything other than what the thoughts have it that you are or what your brain has it that you are, you're in trouble because the brain is still operating with old software right, that comes from a time when we were running around being chased by wild animals, right? The, the brain stem, the reptilian brain is still operating with this outdated software, right? And it's not going to upgrade until people start to recognize that it is outdated because what happens is uh, the software is, is causing, a ba it's causing a backwards function, right? Instead of there being real threats that have the software be useful, right? And it causes you, you respond to being threatened by being afraid and fight or flight, right? Instead of that being the case, now it's coming from the other direction. That you're, you start out afraid and you're looking for something to be afraid of. That's the common... That's the common condition that people are in. People are generally anxious, they're generally afraid, and they're on the lookout for what it is that they should be, be afraid of. And so the system's working backwards now. And so everybody's stressed out and everybody is, uh, has a lot of stress hormones going into your body. People have difficulty sleeping, people are anxious, people are angry, right? Because the system is, is working backwards now. And so if you wake up, you can reorganize the system in a useful way and you begin to see that there is nobody chasing you with a knife. <laughs> and then you can start to relax a little, right? And your brain will start to calm down because now you're feeding it realistic information instead of paranoia, right? You, you have to understand what you're getting into, you know? You, you have to understand that you're, you, you're, you're setting up a, a, a confrontation with your own mind and uh, if you don't understand that that's what you're doing and if you don't understand what it's going to take if you don't understand how to deal with that confrontation successfully you'll just make it worse and worse and worse it's like one of my teachers says don't get into a street fight with your mind you'll lose 
because your mind feeds off of your energy. And if you fight with it, you're giving it that energy to feed off of. And so it becomes, the more you fight, the worse it gets. It's a Chinese handcuff. The more you fight, the worse it gets. The more you fight with your mind, the crazier you get, right? So you discover through the process of not just practicing meditation, but by learning about what the teachings are that are the foundation behind the meditation, and by having somebody guide you in this process that knows the territory, you find out that the way you deal with your mind is the last thing you would imagine, which is that you do nothing. You do nothing. Because your mind is, your mind is, your, your mind is kind of the identity of the person. It's kind of the identity of the personality, right? Because what do we mean by the mind? We mean that the, the thoughts that are occurring, the voice in your head is the mind, right? And if you thought that voice was your voice, right, then you thought you were your mind. So when you go into confrontation with your mind, right, you're dealing with taking on who you have been being, and now you're going to separate yourself from that and start to try and control that, right? And it's not going to work. So when you see that you're not who you thought you were, then whatever that produces to try and draw your attention in and, and argue with you or control you, you simply don't give it any relevance because it's not real. That's the bottom line. There's no point in fighting with something that doesn't exist. There's no point in trying to get, get out of a situation you were never in. That's the real heart of the matter. See, see, because you have to understand something, that the person that you have learned that you are, that you've considered yourself to be, that you've considered to be really who you are, doesn't actually exist. So the way you stop being that person is to simply understand that that person doesn't exist. And so you don't have to get out of a situation you were never in. You were never the person that you think you are, so you don't have to get out of being that person. All you have to do is get clear that that's the case, and when that continues to play, right, its relevance is not, it's not relevant anymore because it's coming from something that was, was a mistake. It's coming from an idea of yourself that was a mistake. And, and see, that's one of the areas of confusion because we talk about it like that, that it was a mistake, but it was an inevitable mistake. You, you know, you can't, there's no way you can get around the idea that you're going to learn that you're a person with a name and a body and everything because that's just a part of what it takes to come into this time and space world we live in. So, you know, it's probably not a good idea to say it's a mistake. It's only said that way because it's, the mistake is that that's not who you that. are. It's possible to, uh, to, 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 to see it that way and then, and then understand that the personality is simply a convention. It's simply something that you're using to interact with life in the world, with other people. But it's not who you are. And that's the way it becomes when you uh, wake up and you realize your true nature. The person is still here, obviously. You can't be just awareness. But now the person is what's being used to express yourself and to be related in the world of time and space. It's not a problem. But there's a hell of a difference between thinking that's all that you are versus the awareness that you are. Okay. So keep practicing meditation, keep coming to class, keep learning. It's very important. I highly recommend that, especially with the, with the resource that we have with the internet now, there are so many really powerful teachers on the internet that are talking about this. And the more you learn about it, the more naturally motivated you're going to be to want to be awake and aware all the time. So stay on, stay on purpose with that. Okay, see you later. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you.